Hey there, this is Chris Sev with Better Dev. About last week, I shared a teaser for a project that Florin Pop and I are working on. And it, right now we're calling it Tailwind X, which more to come on that, but it'll be a very fun project. I shared out this teaser tweet and it has a really cool background. So I thought, you know what, let's make it in a video and show people how that background is done. And something that didn't really show in this picture is that the background tiles kind of animate and pulsate one after the other. And I'll show you how I did that as well. So if I go here, the Tailwind X dashboard slash homepage is kind of created with a similar technique in a previous video. And I'll add a link to that somewhere over there. But the Stripe homepage with Tailwind was created with the same exact technique. It's basically using Tailwind's grid classes to put something behind an image. So right here, we have Stripe homepage with Tailwind, that's the text, and then in the background, there's a grid. And here is the Tailwind X page right here, and we have Tailwind X, and you can see the grid background there, and you can kind of see it animate in and out. So we'll go ahead and build that in this video. So if I go here, I have a brand new code pen, I'm gonna open up my CSS settings, go down here, add Tailwind. And once we have the Tailwind CSS style sheet right there, I'm just gonna go here and let's do min height is screen. Let's go flex item center, justify center, just to get the demo to be the full height, center everything in the middle of this, right? And then we're gonna say background is maybe gray at 900. Okay, so now we have this and then let's do div right here. And we're gonna call this content. And let me zoom in. I don't know if that's enough. Let's go to 20. Maybe I'll also do that. Okay, so we have content here. I'm going to add that. I'm going to say H2 and let's say welcome grid background. And then I'm going to give this a class is going to be text, maybe for Excel text white. Let's go for font is extra bold. And that's all we're going to have for the content. So how do we start working on the background? We're gonna use Tailwind's grid classes. And if you are interested, I have a Tailwind grid video, which I'll link. But here, what we're gonna do is we're going to create a new div for the grid background, background. And I am going to make this a positioned absolutely item right here. So absolute, and then we're gonna say inset is zero. So that'll be top zero, right zero, left zero, bottom zero. But basically that means that this div right here will be the full height and width of its containing div. And we're just gonna put relative right here to make sure that this absolutely positioned item, we say, hey, your parent is this one because the parent of an absolute positioned item is the first relative parent div or parent element. Okay, so we have that. And just to show that it's working, background red, 500, 400, and there it is but you'll notice that the red background is taking place over the content. So we have to say content, hey, class is relative. And that kind of brings it above the absolutely positioned item. Okay, so that's good enough there. So the next step here is that we are going to build out our grid. So I'm gonna say div, I'm gonna say class is background. Let's go for gray at maybe 800 and let's go for rounded right there. And let's see where this is. So it doesn't seem to be taking anywhere. Where did you go? Background gray 800. Well, it has no content inside of it. So if I said, hey, or hi, then we would actually see it. And you see it up there. It's a little subtle because of the 800 is so close to the 900. So let's go for maybe 500 just to show it off. There it is. Okay, so let's give this a padding of maybe 10 or 20. So that it gets not on the edges. Okay, maybe a little smaller. Let's go for two. Mm, how's that? There we go. That's fine right there. And now that we have this, we're going to create a bunch of them. Okay. And then the next step is to create an actual grid. So we're going to say grid and grid columns is 12. So I'm kind of going excessive with the grid at 12. But what we can do here is we can start generating each row separately. So I'm gonna say this will be, let's go up here, we'll say row one, and I'm adding in comments, and we'll say column span is two. Oh, 
dash two, and we'll say this one is column span dash maybe five. This one is column span is maybe one. And then this one will be column span is, we have to add up to 12 because there's 12 columns. So that's two, seven, eight, and this will be four then. Cool. So what we can do here is add a, a gap. So we'll say gap is two. So we get a little bit of spacing in between all of these. There we go. And now watch this. Let me actually zoom out again. I went too far. So I'm going to take this row one and I'll copy this and we'll call this row two. Comment that out, paste this in right here. Oh, we don't want that. So that's row two, but notice that it's the exact same. So I'm going to actually spread these out. Let's put five up here. Let's put three right here. So that'll be eight, uh, nine, 10 and 11, 12. So there we go, we have two rows, each one adds up to 12, and then we'll say the same thing for row three right here. And the strategy here is we're just building up a bunch of these rows so that we can get to this really cool background that looks similar to this. And let me see how many rows, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, right there. Okay, so let's go over here and we're gonna change out the color so it looks better than it currently does. So this will be row three, we don't want that to be the same, so let's increase the size of this one to four. Let's go for even a larger seven here, and then one. Okay, and then let's do row four. And let's just do the comments real quick. So row five and row six, comment there and comment here. And then let's just go copy this one from row one for row four. We'll copy row two bring that down to row five, and then we'll copy row three, and we'll bring that down to row six. And I know this is seeming like a little divitis, and that's absolutely fair feedback for what we're doing here, but that's the case with Tailwind. You can take this and extract it out into a component if you're using React or Vue or something, and that can be the way that you clean up your code. Okay, so we have here, I think that looks pretty decent. Let's change out some stuff, maybe, this one down here, I wanna change. So row five, let's make this uh, be five and we'll close that right there. So that got a little bit larger. Let's change out this one right here for row one, two, three, four. Let's make this a three and this one will be a two, two, four, seven. I totally miscalculated that. So that will be a two now. Actually, let's make that a three and the one. I'm. My goal here is to try to make each row not be so similar to the one below it or above it. And I know I'm adding wrong two, four, seven, and this should be a five. And you know what? I don't like that. Is that right? Two, four, five. Oh, that's totally wrong. So this is a seven. I can't count. <laughs> and it's on video now. Oh, no. Okay, so that one, let's drop this one right here, I don't like that one right there. Let's make this a three. And let's make this a four and a six, sorry everybody. Okay, so at this point, I feel like this is decent enough. Let's drop all of the highs and I'll delete all of the highs right here. Right there. And our grid still stays in place because we have created the grid and each element in the grid will take the height of each row. And let's make sure that we're not at background gray at 500. Let's bop to 800, which is maybe a little too, actually that's not bad. That's pretty good right there. Okay, so what we can do here is the last step is to transform and we're gonna say translate, or sorry, negative skew Y is 12. So that kind of tilts it on an angle and now our background is pretty cool. And then if we wanted to fill in the top left and top right here, we could say scale is maybe 125. And that increases the scale of our grid, so now it takes place there. And if you wanted even thinner rows, you could add more rows. So if I actually took this right here and copied that and pasted there, it would get another row. So that would be a little bit thinner every time you add a new row. And one small thing to give it a little bit more pop, I'm gonna say span right here. Class is text, maybe purple at 500. And let's close the span right there. 
All right, so that's how you create the background. Now let's talk about how we can make each of these tiles kind of pulsate and show off a different level of animation. So if I actually went here and I did animate pulse, which is one of the Tailwind animation classes, I have a video on Tailwind animations, you can see this tile start to pulsate, like kind of, I think it does opacity back and forth. So what we can do here is take every single one right here that is rounded and say animate pulse. And you can see them all pulsating at the same time. And I hope that comes off on screen because it is a little bit dark on dark background, but I hope it does. So what happens here is that they are pulsating, but they are all pulsating at the same exact speed. So that means that their animation duration is the same and the animation delay is the same. They all have no delay. So a way that we can make this pop a little bit more is to change out the animation what we're gonna do here is we are going to do a little bit of JavaScript. And I know that it's not probably best to bring in this JavaScript into our Tailwind project, but we do need to find a way that we can animate these at different durations and delays. So what we're gonna do here is we are going to grab everything we need. And I'm gonna go up here and I'm going to give this a class called grid background. And this is so that we can find every single grid background div inside of the grid. So what I'm going to do here is const grid items is equal to document dot query selector. And let's say grid background and div. So all of the div items inside of this grid background class is going to be part of this query selector, but we actually need all of them. So query selector all. And that should give us back a node list of all of these. So then we can say loop over grid items and create a random duration and delay for each. So what we're going to do here is grid items dot for each item. And I'm going to use an arrow function. So then we're going to say calculate random number for delay, calculate random number for duration, set both. Okay, so we're gonna say const delay is equal to, and I actually am gonna cheat here. I have a function on the side over here. I didn't wanna write this on video, but it's basically a get random int function right here, where it takes a minimum and a maximum, and it gives you a random number inside of those numbers. So we're gonna say delay is get random int and let's say zero and five for the delay const duration is equal to get random int and this one can go a little bit larger three to six and i got these numbers just from playing around with the uh, durations and delays and we'll set both so we have the item here and for each one we're going to say item dot style dot Animation delay is equal to, and I'm going to do this with the back ticks. I'm going to say delay and add in an S on it. So that's for seconds. And then we're going to say item.style.animation duration is equal to duration and an S. Oh, actually, the S needs to go inside of the back ticks. There we go. So at this point, every single one of our grid items should be pulsating at a different speed and a different duration. So if I actually right click inspect element here, you can see that that one animation delay is zero. The duration is four seconds. This one is two seconds to four seconds, five. And now that gives us a little bit of a pulsate where each one pops on a different level at a different time. So I hope that was helpful. A little bit of JavaScript for this Tailwind tutorial but I think it's all right. It doesn't do too much. And hopefully in the future, Tailwind will add an animation delay class, just like there is a transition delay. But I think this is a really fun tutorial. This technique of using a grid in the background is very flexible. You can do a lot of things with it. You can do this. You can do uh, this Stripe homepage with Tailwind. And I just wanted to show that off. So if you did like this video, please like and subscribe. And thanks for watching.